Microphones are on, councilors. Call this city council meeting to order. Please rise and join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Um, Kindly ask anyone here in the audience and, Mr. and Mr. President, before we start the one meeting. Second, one second, Councilor. Uh, Councilors, I, 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 folks, I just asked people to turn their uh, cell phones off or the silent position and please remove your hats if you're waiting you. in the chamber, please. Jesus Christ. Mr. 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 President, <coughs> if I could, um, if we could take a moment of silence. The city of Brockton uh, lost a, a great gentleman Sudbury, the other night, you? suddenly and tragically, Ernie Bronco who we all know is, uh, as an educator, as an administrator, principal at the uh, Alternative School, and also a, a great coach at Brockton High School Soccer and also Stonehill College. And we lost him tragically, and our thoughts and prayers are with his family. Going home. Thank you, Council. Mr. President, Council if I may, this is a sign of respect. Would everyone please remove their hats while in Council chambers? I know you have an issue, and I know you have a point you want to get across, but as a sign of respect, women only wear hats, as in church. Please remove your hats in Council chambers. It Appreciate is the, it. It's a duty. Yeah, all right. Mr. It president? Is, it is the... the duty of the council president to preserve decorum in the chamber <laughs> and it is, it is not uncommon for the council president to ask people to a turn off their telephones and b remove their hats it's a sign of respect it's done in courthouses and in meeting places around the commonwealth so please remove your hats as a sign of respect for this institution for the institution of the city council thank you very much Thank Mr. President, President I'd like to take uh, items uh, 9 and 2 out of order before we start the hearing for the, uh, the yeah. process on the tax. Second. <clears throat> nine. 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 9 and 2. Okay. So is there a second? Second. 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 Motion made probably second to two take the items. Nine. Nine and two out of order. In that order, Council? Uh, yes, please. All, right. All those in favor? Those opposed? The, the uh, motion is adopted. Item number nine. Is this, this is Pet so. Pet Petition of Court Street Service for Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License located at 65 Court Street in City <coughs> Clerk's Office September 12, 2013. Hearing is signed for November 25, 2013, at 8 p.m. In City Council, November 25, 2013. Council of Dinopoli, motion to postpone, properly seconded. The motion carried by a hand vote. Work as comp is on file, and all paperwork is on file. The fire department has no objections. Time having arrived for the hearing, I declare this hearing open. Is anyone here in favor? Please come forward, give your name, and address to the clerk. Yes, my name is John O'Connor. I'm the owner of the property at 65 Court Street. There's been a garage license in there for many, many years. Uh, the individual who had previously held a garage license has vacated. In reality, the person who wishes to take over the garage license has been the person doing mechanical in there for several years under the other individual's license. Now he seeks to uh, have his own. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening. Uh, we spoke. And uh, I have uh, stipulations I'm going to implement uh, after uh, after the uh, the hearing closes, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> anyone else here in favor? Please come forward, give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing anyone else, thank you, sir. Anyone here in opposition? Please come forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing no one, I declare the hearing closed. Council Dinapoli. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, stipulations for the license and auto repair at 65 Court Street. The hours of operation will be Monday through Friday from 8 to 6. Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. There will be no Sundays, no holidays, no outside storage of auto parts or byproducts. There will be no junk cards stored. There will be no outside telephones or vending machines. The dumpster must be enclosed. The number of cars to be stored inside 
I believe will be, I believe you told me, is that four or six? Six. Six will be six. The number of cars stored overnight, no more than ten. And I'd like to submit this. Is there a second to the <coughs> motion for the stipulations? Second. Motion remain properly seconded President. to adopt the stipulations. <coughs> On the motion, Councillor. I have uh, questions for the, the new owners around the stipulations. Uh, if there's no objection, uh, Councillor um, Stewart would like to ask questions. And uh, if there's no objections, Councillor Stewart can remain seated. Thank Sir, you. if you want to just come forward again. Thank you. Actually, so the new owners of the establishment, they're here today, correct? Yes, that's correct. Can I, can I just have a word with the new owners, please? Just for the record, my name is Armindo Gonsalves, and I'm here to interpret for Mr. Kojabi, uh, who's the, uh, not the owner, but the operator of the premise. Excellent. Uh, um, to be operator. Excellent. Uh, this is pretty normal for me, so I'm not um, focusing on you specifically, but um, concerning the stipulations, so you guys are in full understanding what those stipulations are, and does your business plan allow you to have the limitations that are in place and still make a profit? If I could, um, just Yes, we've had uh, lengthy discussions with Mr. DiNapoli and also the uh, landlord. Uh, the parameters have been set with the license. We, we can abide by those and, and still be able to operate. Excellent. And I ask that question because in the past I've had small business owners approach me where they've sort of broken those stipulations and, and in the end have had their licenses revoked. And I know that many small business owners, in many cases, uh, mortgage their homes to support their businesses and they end up losing their their homes and their businesses when they can't operate. So I just want to make it clearer that we have a pretty strong enforcement team around the stipulations and you guys should be aware of that. Okay, he's, he's aware of it and again, um, on, we, we are firm that we'll comply with that. It shouldn't in any way hinder his ability to make a profit. Great. And then lastly, I know that you were here for the previous meeting and had to go back to Boston because yes. it wasn't clear in our, in our sort of normal process of things that you speak to your ward counselor when you're looking for this type of license. It's, it's not a formal protocol, but more informal, but so that it's more clear, we now have attached to the application for these kind of licenses, the fact that it's recommended that you talk to your ward counselor so that, so that everyone's on the same page and government is a little bit more efficient that way. I appreciate that. That would be helpful if I had known that. You know, a lot of the stuff could have been resolved, but we know what? We're in good hands. So as long as we have the set procedures, then we know where to follow it. That'd be great. great. So for everybody. No, I totally agree. I'm glad you brought that to my attention. So thank right. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Question is on adoption of the stipulations. All those in favor? All those opposed, the stipulations are adopted. Question is on granting the license with the stipulations. All those in favor? All those opposed, the license is granted. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clark, number two. <clears throat> the petition of Elman Auto Body and Repair Inc. for motor vehicle repair, mechanical and body license at 10 Pickham Street in City Clerk's Office, October 9, 2013. Hearing assigned for December 9, 2013. Uh, the fire department has no objections to the mechanical repairs. However, they state that the uh, body is pen should be pending until the proper equipment is installed. Time may have arrived for the hearing. To declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? Please come <coughs> forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Is there anyone here in favor? Anyone here opposed? Actually, I'll close the favorable portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here opposed? Hmm? Seeing no one here, declare the hearing closed. Councilor uh, DiNapoli. Mr. President, motion to postpone this. Uh, gentleman right there. Oh, he's oh, okay. he is here. Okay, sorry we, about we that. We opened the hearing. Come mind. on up. <laughs> sorry about that. They told me that they were going to be fine. here. <clears throat> so we're going to open up the hearing uh, for those in favor. Gentlemen, come forward. Give your name and address to the clerk. This is Elmo. And what's your address? 10 uh, Main Street. 1000 Main Street. Or 10 uh, Pinkham. If I might. 10 Pinkham. Bilingual English. Bilingual English. Do you speak English? Yeah, I speak English, okay. but so, you know, slowly. Okay. Which address do you want from him, if I could ask? Uh, he, he, his uh, personal address. That's home address. Home address, not the business. Or home address. address. Thank you, Mr. President. 
No, I just saw. 56 with George in Dorchester. Okay. And you're in favor of this license? You're in favor of the granting of this license, both of you? Yes. Okay, and what's your name? My name is Swet Saldoni. And where do you live? I live in the 561, yeah, 651 Winter Street, East Widwater. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. You can, you can remain seated. I, I'd like to inquire of the clerk, uh, the application, does it list a home address for either both parties or either party? The address is 10, the, the it business says that address. The, the residence of uh, El Elmond is at 56 Ridgewood Street, Ridgewood Rochester, Mass. Yes. And the location of the business is Ted Pinkham Street. Mm -hmm. There's a garage license there under John Rudnicki. Yes. At uh, the owner of the land, 45 Turnpike Street, West Bridgewater. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. We met. You remember you and I met six weeks ago? Yes, I do. Okay. okay. Uh, you understood everything that we discussed, right? You spoke good English that day. Yeah, I know. You still do, I think. Yeah, that's I I'm going to try to slow down because I, I don't want you to, okay. to miss on anything I have to say. Uh, we met and we discussed the hours of a business that should be open and items like that. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm going to be moving to grant this license. Mm -hmm. uh, you appear to me to be a gentleman, an honest gentleman, and, uh, but there are stipulations. Okay. So uh, I, I will read them, the stipulations. I want you to make sure you hear them when I read them to the uh, body. That's all I have. Could you read them now so Councillor Stewart, if he has any questions? I certainly will. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Stewart. <laughs> The stipulations on this, on this license would be, this is at 10 Pinkham Street, but it actually sits on Main Street, almost across from the Cape Cod Cafe. It's a very large piece of property okay. uh, with a large garage. The hours of operation they would like to be open is Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., no Sundays. Uh, there is a church adjacent a short distance away. The maximum number of vehicles associated with this business to be on the premises during the day will be 17, one seven. Okay. 17. Inside, I wonder, okay. Including employee and customer vehicles, as well as vehicles in need of repair and any vehicle related to accessory businesses associated with the license. Uh, and the reason There's I'm- 17 on the property, correct? Right, the reason I'm enunciating on that, these gentlemen, actually inquired and wanted to get a uh, used car license and they would have had enough room uh, so we talked numbers if that would have happened. It did not happen. The maximum number of vehicles to be stored outside overnight is 12. One, two. Twelve. This includes all vehicles associated with any business operated by the license holder on this property including any business such as used car sales. But you won't have a license to use car sales at all, so. No. You can't do it. I can't, okay. No storage, outside storage of automotive parts and our products, such as oil, grease, gasoline, etc. No outside coin-operated machines, including but not limited to pay phones and vending machines. The property should be kept clean and neat and free of debris at all time. No painting, priming, or bonding until such time as the proper equipment has been installed and approved by the Brockton Fire Department. Okay. And that's an important one. Okay. The license shall not be issued by the city clerk until the building inspector shall provide written confirmation of the following conditions have been satisfied. A gas trap, as required by the building department, shall be installed, and a dumpster and a concrete pad with screening fence shall be inside if, if the dumpster is outside. Yes. Uh, if there is space inside of the building, a dumpster is allowed to be kept inside as, as long as it can't be viewed. Okay. Those are the stipulations. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you very thank much, you. Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Stewart. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Is it Gorillas? He's going to ask some questions, okay? This Councilor Stewart. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so, you understand the stipulations, correct? The stipulation for. Um, so you understand the rules of operating the business? Yes. So you're in agreement with those rules? Yeah. You had, you sort of, uh, 
when Councillor Spadinsky mentioned 12 cars overnight, uh, you sort of grimace. So is that, does that work for you, 12 cars overnight at that yeah, location? Yeah, I ask uh, more than that, but uh, if uh, that's uh, the, the number that we require, it's okay. It's okay. Because, uh, you know, once you get a license with those rules, you have to abide by those rules. Yes. You know, sometimes I recommend to potential owners not to accept the license and to try to figure out if you can get better stipulations based on the needs of your business. All right. But once you get the license based on those stipulations, you have to abide by them. So you're comfortable with those stipulations, right? Yeah. Okay. And just one clarification, Mr. President. Sure. So um, the hours of operation, uh, I think in a previous meeting we determined that clients could leave their cars to be repaired before those hours as long as work isn't done on those vehicles, correct? We had this conversation in a previous that, meeting. So the clerk has said that, that would be covered under the 12 cars that you left at night. Yeah, night. No work could be done on the vehicles during the hour, unless it, during the hours of operation. Right. But if so, as long as work isn't done on those vehicles, <coughs> even if they're under their 12 car limit, so they could still have clients leave those cars outside of those business hours, correct? I don't think that would be deemed a violation. Correct. Okay. Um, all right, so as long as you guys are comfortable, I, I will vote in favor of this. As I mentioned earlier, I've had a number of business owners come to me um, after the fact, struggling um, both on the business side and the personal side because they lost their licenses. So I just want to make certain that you understand what you're agreeing yeah. to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Anyone you. else in favor? Please come forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing no one else in favor, clear that portion of the hearing closed. Is anyone here in opposition? Please come forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing no one in opposition, I declare the hearing closed. Councilor Stadinsky. Yes, uh, I would uh, make a motion to uh, approve this uh, with the stipulations as read. Second. Question is uh, motion properly made and seconded on the stipulations. All those in favor? All those opposed? <laughs> the stipulations are adopted. All those in granting the license as stipulated. All those in favor? All those opposed? The license is approved. Mr. Clerk, item number one. Order that the City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. So I'm having arrived for the hearing. I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? If so, please come forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Good evening, councillors. Um, my name is Paul Sullivan. I'm chairman board of assessors for the city, and I live at 291 Carl Ave in the city. Um, first off, I just want to thank um, Councillor Brophy, Councillor McMillan, and Councillor Petty for the years of service that you've um, given to us uh, in setting the tax rates and the budgets. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, so uh, I want to personally thank you. Um, good evening, councillors and citizens of Brockton. Um, I just want to um, make a brief statement regarding the fiscal year 2014 setting of the tax rate. Mr. Sullivan, you could just could explain the whole purpose why we're here tonight before you get started. Exactly. Thank you. Um, the, this year was a revaluation year on property values. The city added in new growth approximately one million. 425,808. The assessor's office is required to fairly assess 27,492 parcels. There are 16,449 single family dwellings, 2,029 condominiums, 3,495 two and three family dwellings, 391 apartment buildings. As far as mixed use properties, we have 131. And for commercial and industrial buildings, we have 1,802. It's important to note that for the fiscal 2000 assessing date, that is January 1st of 2013. And you need to have a year of sales, and that would be during calendar year 2012. And I have left a brochure for you folks, and as well as the public so 
With that, I would like you to just turn to page one in the handout. Brockton continues to have the lowest single family average tax bill of the surrounding towns based on fiscal year 2013 data, which equates to $3,112 for the average tax bill. I've provided some split rate tax communities for comparison. There's Randolph, Quincy, Taunton, Fall River, and New Bedford. Please turn to page two. This chart represents the percent change of the median sale price of single family homes from calendar year 2013 versus calendar year 2012. And as you can see from the graph, the city is experience, experiencing roughly 16.14% increase in the median sell, sales price through October of this year. And it seems that uh, the trend is starting to go in a positive mode, which I'm glad that's happening for the city. Please turn to page three. This chart represents the same statistics as the previous one, except this is for the selling price for condominiums in year 2013 versus 2012, and that shows a modest increase of 5.41%. Please turn to page four. This chart shows the total taxable value of the city. The current value of the city is $5,362,178,891. And this is a slight 2% decrease from last year. It appears that the city's values have somewhat stabilized. We've been along, bumping along the road. And based on the increase from year to date, through October with the increase. I'm optimistic that we're going to start to come out of this. Please turn to page four. Uh, five, I'm sorry, page five. <clears throat> this chart represents the tax levy growth. And for educational purposes, to determine the tax levy for fiscal year 2014, you take last year's levy limit of 112,506,174 times the allowable 2.5% plus you add this year's new growth of the $1.4 million resulting in fiscal year 2014 levy of 116,744,636. And page six please. This, this chart represents the historical levy percent, which is borne by each class. Last year, the City Council chose a factor of 1.57. And for pages 7 and 8, for this year, it will show what the tax rate will be for each class based on what the factor, and it's up to City Council to decide the factor. If council maintains the same factor this year, the corresponding rate will be $18.06 per thousand, and the industrial commercial rate will be $34.18. And again, as a reminder last year, the residential rate was $16.88, and the commercial rate was $31.91. I've also provided Supplemental pages 9, 10, and 11, which are educational purposes. And those pages briefly explain Proposition 2.5, what the annual levy is, new growth factor, the annual levy ceiling. And with that, councillors, I thank you, and I will try to answer any questions you may have. Councillors, any questions for Mr. Sullivan? Mr. President. Councilor Stewart. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, thank you for 
preparing this, just could you describe for the public, there's sort of three uh, items that we're discussing here tonight or we're, we're going to impact tonight. One is the actual tax bill, one is the, the tax rate and the factor. Can you just describe those three things individually, please? Okay. For the tax bill, the city has a budget of approximately $386 million. We receive estimated receipts from the state, from local collections, and the balance is picked up or borne by the taxes. The property the ta local property, property taxes. taxes. The local property taxes for your residential, your commercial industrial, personal property, and so forth. And that is what will fulfill to balance the budget. The levy each year, the Department of Revenue will tell us what we can put for the levy, the levy ceiling. It's a mathematical calculation. And the balance that's picked up by the local taxes, that is what fulfills and balances the budget. Without a balanced budget, the city can't send out the tax bills. Um, if for this year, if the tax bills, or for any given year, if the tax bills are not sent out on January 1st, you have to wait until the May billing. And that would be harmful to the city. Number one, you have to borrow the money in order to run the city. The Department of Revenue looks upon the city and says, how come you can't establish a factor? You've already set your budget in June. We have the budget. And this here is nothing more than filling in the remaining part of the puzzle in order to satisfy the budget for the year. It's very expensive as, as opposed to not setting it that the borrowing cost incurred in order to fund the city. Um, you have Moody's and they would frown upon the city by not doing what they were supposed to do. So it's our obligation to maintain services and fund the city. And how is it possible for a city to have, uh, for residents in a city to have a lower tax bill but have a higher tax rate? Can you explain that? To if us? values come down, it's a mathematical function. Approximately five or six years, you can look in the chart that I have. which would be on page four, the value, the overall value of the city in 2007, 2008 was over eight billion dollars, which as a result, when you do the mathematical calculations, our tax rate came down. Con consequently now, the value has come down. We've lost about a third of the value. Therefore, the rate starts to go up. It's, it's X times Y in order to fund the budget. Mm -hmm. So in all likelihood, I would love to say values are going through the roof, which would equate to bringing down the tax per, per thousand, the number. Right. So the higher the values of the, pro the property, the, the less you need to have in terms of a rate because the rate you're itself. trying to cover a certain the, Exactly. Budget. It's a mathematical and calculation. If the values go up, the individual rate can come down. Right. And in, in, in terms of looking at city in comparison to other municipalities, uh, is it better to look at, in, in terms of our being competitive and, and residents and business owners feeling, feeling as if they're in the right place to do business or to live, is it better to look at the rate or the actual tax bill? As far as the rate, that's going to be a function with each community. You have a city and you're trying to compare it to a town as far as the, you know, what you get for your dollar being in a city, you have a lot more available to you. You have, for example, more schools, police, fire, uh, maintaining the community, the roads, and for example, snow plowing and so forth. Uh, that does cost money. If you have more properties, the rate should come down. Mm -hmm. However, you're, you're, you're trying to compare a small community so the tax base is smaller than a larger city. Um, their budget is entirely different from ours. So it's great to have higher values 
in both communities. That means things are going well. Mm -hmm. uh, each community has come down a little bit through the years because of the economy and the foreclosure crisis that struck everyone across the country. And some communities have come down a little bit, others much more. And those services that you mentioned uh, are principally on the residential side um, or benefits to residents and the taxes they pay. What are businesses looking at? I mean, I mean, as far as the increase in businesses? Yeah, in terms of Brockton being competitive. So I mean, in other words, are some of the services that could justify the additional taxes that individuals are paying at, at the residential level in many cases are exclusively Well, if, if, if you're a business in the city, you have 93,000 people that you can attract for business. If you're in a small community like Avon, maybe there's 5,500 people in the, in the town. Mm -hmm. So I think you can draw a lot more traffic to your business in a city compared okay. to a smaller community. Great. I may have, I may have additional <coughs> questions later, but I'll, I'll yield the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Stewart. Councilman Petty. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening. I've always enjoyed your presentation. You do a very, very uh, thorough uh, job of communicating your uh, reasons for um, whether we should go up or down or whatever your uh, numbers are. I Thank you. That. I try, but the DOR has their eyes on me. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, I just want to ask you one question. The residential tax rate right now is 16.88 correct per thousand. And in the event that we maintain the same factor, it would go up to 18.06, which would be an increase of $1.18 per thousand, correct? Oh, if, yeah. Okay. Yep. In the, what, would ha what infusion would ha of tax revenue would have to take place to keep it at its current level or even lower it? If, for instance, if there were houses built and there were $2 million worth of uh, added tax revenue coming to the city, what number would keep that at 1688 or lower it? That I do not know. The, do a rule of the, thumb per... No, and the reason being you're taking your budget for the year minus your estimated receipts, whatever is remaining, that's picked up by the tax. So if I could say our city value is going up, it's going to help when you figure out the overall value of the community. That will help reduce the tax per thousand. Mm -hmm. And you have to just run different numbers. I, I can't emphasize that we need more residential homes building, more commercial buildings, bringing in businesses to the community. Mm -hmm. You bring in more people into the community, they're spending their money, businesses are thriving. It's a win-win situation. If you're stagnant, you're not expanding. So, Sullivan, what is the uh, revenue brought in by the Westgate Mall parcel of land? The, the buildings within the Westgate Drive area, what does that bring in? Several hundred thousand a year in taxes? Yes, I don't have the exact number, but their value, I believe, is approximately $50 million. Five zero or 15? Five zero. Five zero. Fifty, Five zero. 50 okay. million. Also, I, 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 I I don't think we need to go into what specific property or taxpayers are paying within the city, specific properties. I think he's answered the question as to uh, what a new um, taxes would, uh, infusion of new taxes would bring to the city after you indicated he couldn't really answer that. So what's your next question, Council? My question is what will it take to maintain a $16.88 per thousand tax rate? You'd need to have increase in growth and if in June, if the, the budget is reduced, mm -hmm. you have to, it's a ballpark number. And then after our values are certified for the hearing now, mm -hmm. then you would be able to do the calculations to come up with some type of a number. In a sense, we're the last resort. The budget is already put together. That's certified. The estimated receipts are certified, and we're filling in the remaining with the classification. And that is it, it's how you're divvying up the the pie in a sense. The the budget's already done, mm -hmm. and the tax rate is what's fulfilling it. To and the chair would like to remind and, and the I have one council. Yeah. The chair would like yeah. to remind the councilor and all those yeah. present that the tax, as Mr. Sullivan indicated, mm -hmm. the taxes have been set. 
This is on how we determine to set the factor mm -hmm. for this coming year. So Understood. Keep, and one if more everybody quest could keep yeah. their questions focused on that issue, the chair would appreciate that. Absolutely. Mr. Sullivan, just one more question. Out of $386 million it takes uh, the, the, the city's budget, what did we raise in taxes last year? A little over 110, 115? Last year was a hundred eleven million. One eleven one eleven five oh six. Okay. Yeah. All right, Miss Sullivan. Thank you very much, You're Paul. Welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you much. Thank you, Council. Mr. President. Any other questions for Mr. Sullivan? Council Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan. How are you tonight? Good evening, Council. I'm well and you. Uh, good, thank you. Um, this is always uh, a very informative uh, and extremely important uh, session of the legislative branch. My question is this, because the city of Brockton has a split rate, if you try to take care of the residents and lower their burden, it's an increase on the business commercial owners. And then if you try to take care of the business commercial industrial owners, it's going to increase the rates on the residential. Uh, that's just the way it is because we have a split rate in this municipality. Uh, and that's a fact. I guess my question is, what if we ever contemplated, if the city of Brockton ever contemplated to have a uniform rate? And I think, with all deference, Mr. Council, I think that's a legitimate question uh, because I've been asked uh, by my constituents about that and I didn't have an answer. Councillor, on page seven, yes, seven and eight, which are the residential and the yep. various factors, the first factor, which would be one. The one. If we, if the council decided to just have one single rate for the city properties, that would equate to $21.77. So that's always an option if you just want to have one rate. There's a lot of communities that have that. So again, if I, kind of a numbers guy, if, if we did that in theory and we made it uniform across the board at one, <coughs> it would be estimate about a $6 per thousand increase to 21.77 from the original 16.88. So about six bucks uh, burden on the residential and it would be uh, a decrease of uh, about 10 bucks on the commercial side? Correct. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll have a few more questions later on. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. You're Chair. You're welcome. Mr. Sullivan, any other questions for Mr. Sullivan? Councilor Dubois. Um, thank you. Hello, Mr. Sullivan. Thanks for coming. And Good thank evening. Thank you for sending me all the information. I really appreciate it. Yep. Um, just to my fellow councilor's point earlier about the split rates, and this is just for education of people at home, um, isn't it true any community that has more than 20 percent um, commercial industrial typically has a split rate? My research shows that. Okay. If your research shows it, I don't. And recently, um, Easton was contemplating going to a split rate, and they made the determination not to because right. their commercial industrial <clears throat> base is still at 14 percent. So in reality, if Brockton ever thought about going back to a flat rate, it would be doing a severe disservice to the residents because it would be outside of the norm. I have in front of me, I did a little search of the DOR, and thank you for sending me that information, where you could compare different municipalities based on their population size. So when I plugged in um, 88, 86,000 to 100,000 people, I came up with the t only towns of Brockton, Quincy, New Bedford, Lynn, and Fall River fall within that. And every single one of them has a split rate, just so everybody knows. It's pretty normal to have a split rate. And um, Brockton, um, when you look at the ratio for these towns anyways, um, Brockton's was 1688, um, then commercial 3191. And then Fall Rivers was 1193, and commercial was 2543. And uh, Lynn's was $16.93 residential and $34.55 commercial. And um, Quincy was $14.50 residential and $30.61 commercial. Now, do you think that these other communities are going to be facing a similar factor question when they go into their budget hearings where we're looking at the potential of raising residential rates to like the 18 point? Because when I look at communities around our size, a lot of them are in that $16 point for 2013. Are, they, are we going to see a lot of them moving to 18 or are we going to be... Um, are we going to really bump up that list with the 18? Councilor, they all have to pick a factor. Uh-huh. So whatever they decide, the councilors decide, as you do this evening. 
and the factor is the factor is kind of set based on like uh, we couldn't right now we have a choice from point zero one point zero to one point six three correct we couldn't SD. go to one point six four right no. and no. why is that you would be over the amount of the single family minimum residential factor and that does the Department of Revenue does not allow you to shift more onto the commercial and get it away from the residential. So you have to keep it within guidelines. All right. That makes sense to me. And I'm, I'm sorry I have so many questions about it. It's just the more you look into it, the more questions come up. So, I mean, in your job, you must be constantly just educating yourself. It just seems... Um, it seems interesting, and I don't know if you can answer this question for me. So, Brockton's budget in 2013 was around three, three million. 306. Uh, I think it was 367 seven million. million. Yep. And New Bedford's for a similar size community is um, 296 million point five. And but yet there, what the amount that they levy is so much less than ours. So I'm just wondering how similar sized communities with similar sized budgets, how their tax levies can be so much smaller than other communities. So New Bedford's tax levy is 95 million and ours is 111 million. Every community is different, Councillor. You know, I'm, I try to do what I can here. And, but the thing it, is it, their valuation, their total assessed value is insanely similar to ours. It's literally, ours is, what is it, 5,486,000,000. Theirs is 5,479,000,000. Mm -hmm. So just even though their assessed value is, is right on par with ours, how can, is it, it's, that is, doesn't play a role in it? Or? Total of budget amounts for the year. Each year it's different. Their total, the, the total levy, and then their total budget, those numbers are different with every community. And you may still have the same value-wise, but the total budget, the operating budget of a community can vary greatly. Yeah, it's amazing because when you go to the DOR, it shows the breakdown of expenses. And it's like Brockton is spending the most on our fire department and mm -hmm. the least on our parks and recreation. And it, it's just interesting that how it breaks it out and how we're spending our money. But that is, you know, a, d a topic for a different day. But I appreciate you being here. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna let other people ask questions now. Thank you. Thank you, Council hey, Council McMillan. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan. And thank you for those kind words. But don't forget, I still have your cell phone number. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta change it. Um, let's see. Here. The, this is all about the 2.5% increase in the budget. You have your 2.5% plus you add the new growth right? and you come up to a total levy. So if we had taken the free cash that we carry over from year to year to subsidize the 2.5% increase, we wouldn't have to go up into taxes, correct? Whatever your budget is for the year. Right, but this, this is, is going up because of our 2.5% increases in the budget, was in the budget. So if we had used the free cash which the city carries over from year to year, we could have reduced this, the 2.5%, down to probably one, whatever we wanted to do. So that tax rate, now we won't be fighting to get that, make up all that money with, on the burden of the residential, on the burden of the commercial, home, uh, commercial businesses. Well, the budget has already been set. Ex yeah, exactly. And I'm just saying, if at that time when we did the budget and for the councils they're going to be here next year I will not you should really look into that because the CFO agreed that the money was there to do that back then when I recommended this but we now we're in a catch-22 where everyone's going to get hit and the way I'm looking at it everyone's going to get hit get hit around two hundred dollars plus a year, a year a raise raising the taxes so Council, once again remind everyone to please you, focus President. on the the uh, issue that before us, which is setting the tax rate. Yep. I understand your point, and it's well taken. Thank you, Councilor. Do you, you have any other questions? Uh, Mr. Sullivan, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Right. Anyone else for Mr. Sullivan? Councilor Stewart, you have a follow up? Yeah, my question was answered. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Anyone else here in favor? Thank you. 
seeing no one else in favor, I think what we'll do right now is just we're going to take folks, uh, whether they're for or against, and try and uh, there's a number of people who have signed up already, and I'm sure there are other people who have not who want to speak. So we're just going to, I'm going to take people in the order. The clerk received the facts uh, this afternoon, and we'll start to read those names. You can state whether you're for or against uh, the uh, tax rate. Uh, just ask people to try and uh, limit their comments to about two minutes. I'm not sure how many people we're going to have tonight, but please, uh, you know, try and limit your comments. Try not to read your comments. If you have something in writing, please submit it. We'll make it a part of the permanent record of the council. So uh, with that, ask everybody to keep in mind, again, that we're discussing the uh, rate that will be set tonight, the proportion between residential and commercial. The issue of uh, taxes has already been determined in July. So we're just talking about the rate tonight. And uh, ask everybody, please, uh, to uh, observe the, uh, the, um, our, our rules. And uh, my job is to preserve decorum. And I don't really need to remind anyone of that. But please be polite. Uh, the first person we have to speak is Mr. Robert Ford. Mr. Ford, would you like to come forward? And give you an address to the, um, to the clerk, please. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Good evening. How are you? Good, yourself? Pretty good. Uh, my name is Robert Ford. I reside at 61 Bonnie Street in Brockton. Go right ahead, sir. Okay, basically it's, uh, it's deja vu here in Brockton once again, and it's part of a recurring nightmare that goes on every single year. You know, the council was working basically in concert with the CFO to once again raise our taxes. And basically the, the council as a whole, they suffer from selective hearing, only listening to what the CFO tells them. Uh, they don't show any interest in getting a second opinion at all. And, and uh, basically uh, there's going to be a couple of other speakers following me. One is a former councilor candidate, and he'll give you some startling revelations what the CFO shared with him during a meeting last summer. And also, uh, another speaker that's well versed in finance will show you how you can meet, meet your tax budget without, without going up on, on there. The money is there in the city. And, uh, Basically, that's all. I, and one other thing, I hopefully that the, the councilors that are now stepping down from the, the council, maybe they'll search deep into their conscience and possibly do what's right for the citizens of Brockton. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Ford. Once again, remind everybody the, the issue before us is the tax rate, and please limit your comments to that. The next speaker uh, who signed up earlier was Richard Zakara. Good evening, Mrs. Zaccaro. How are you? Good evening. Thank you. Could My you name is Dick, Dick Zaccaro, 55 Oneida Avenue. Thank you so much. I do have some prepared comments, very brief, but before I get into that, I would like to uh, highlight an article that I saw today in the Boston Herald. It stated, taxpayers get a break. It said, there's good news from the State Department of Revenue. Tax collections in 2013 were high enough to trigger a reduction to the state income tax rate, which will drop from 5.25% down to 5.2%, the tax year beginning uh, January 1st of 2014. Um, I applaud Councillor uh, Dubois for pointing out a couple other similar communities to Brockton. I, like her, have done some research. And the four that stand out in my mind, very comparable to our city of champions, Fall River, New Bedford, Taunton, and Quincy. Now, councilors, if you look at an assessed home, a property value in these four communities at 200,000 compared to a home that's assessed at 200,000 in our city, you're going to find that the four comparable cities are paying much le less 
and residential tax revenues with the rates they pay versus ours. And I also believe an interesting fact that they all have more police officers than the city of Brockton as well. And we all know we could use more police officers. And the fact still remains that we have the 78th highest residential tax rate in the entire state out of 347 communities and the 20th highest commercial tax rate in the state out of the 347 communities. Meanwhile, we all also have one of the poorest communities in the Commonwealth per gross combined family income being $47,000 a year. Now, I just have a brief prepared comment that I would like to make. I'd ask you to make it very brief, and if you'd like to, Mrs. Account, please submit that to the okay. clerk, okay? I will. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for the opportunity allowing me to speak before you tonight, and I promise you that I'll keep my prepared comments short to the point. Let me start off by saying that in today's economically challenging times, I commend you for holding public office. It's not an easy job today. We come here before you tonight, hopefully not to be perceived as radicals or troublemakers, but as concerned residents who want to make our city the best it possibly can be. Unlike many people, including a good percentage of our own city employees who have moved out of the city, we, the taxpayers, continue to choose to live here. The vote you are about to make tonight will impact the future of our city. Let me say that we cannot afford to have another tax increase. We have already lost a good portion of our middle class and businesses who continue to leave the city because it is no longer affordable to live here. We have also paid our debt to society by having enough homeless shelters, drug clinics, and other undesirable elements in the city. We do not need any more, but what we do need is to once and for all hold the line of higher taxes. It's long overdue. So I ask you, councilors, please reject the tax factor tonight and tell the mayor and the CFO to go back and find the money needed to fund to fund bud the budget shortfall somewhere else, not on the backs of our taxpayers any more than you already have done so. You know that the money is readily available to come up with the $3.1 million needed to balance the budget without increasing our taxes. Mr. Condon also knows that it is available, and above all, we the taxpayers and backbone of our city know it's available. The Water Commission has recommended to you this year that we need an increase in our water rates when we have a $5 million surplus balance in the Enterprise Fund, and you respectfully voted Mrs. not Zagaro, to do so. that's stuff. not before us tonight, so. Okay. All right. So now Mr. Khan is recommending to you once again raise our taxes when we have a $29 million surplus of unrestricted cash that is available to use at your discretion. Therefore, counselors, please tell Mr. Khan in the same message that you told the Water Commissioners when they recommended that you vote for an increase in our water rates. The firefighters received their three-year retroactive pay raise as well as the city department heads all, who also received their pay raises. Additionally, our property valuations are also going to increase our tax bills next year. Therefore, I will end tonight by asking you once again to vote no on any new taxes. And thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to speak here before you tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Zakao. Before I call the next um, um, person to speak, reminder again, this is not about raising taxes. This is about setting a tax rate to determine how we proportion between residential and commercial. <coughs> and also, just to let you know, the decision tonight is not the CFOs, it is the city councils. So we value your input, and that's what we're asking for, is your input tonight on how we should set this rate. So the next person to speak is Mr. Ron Maddy. Thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. How are you? Could you give me a address, please? Can read? It'll take me a couple of minutes. Well, sir, if you could try and uh, limited editorialize. My name is Ron Matter. I live at 29 Breer Street in Brockton. We, the taxpayers, are here again to protest another tax increase, an unnecessary tax increase that will drive good people and, and businesses from the city. Last December, we came here to protest a tax increase, and you stated that there was nothing you could do as you're stating tonight. But you said, come back in June because we hear you and we'll sharpen our pencils. 
Unfortunately, the only thing you shot in was a knife to stab the back taxpayers in the back. I would like to quote a, uh, a, from a Council of uh, Enterprise uh, article. He said, however, any attempt to replace the tax increase would likely cause steep cuts in the areas of gov other government. Uh, we'll probably have to make severe cuts to personnel and services if the council were to keep the residential and commercial rates at current levels. Mr. Matter, I'm just going to remind you again, this is not about raising taxes. This is about setting the factor. So the well, comments, I'm getting to that. so you please get to the point, please. Okay. Thank you. It appears that Mr. Condon didn't tell the council there was enough money to cover the budget. If you, uh, Mr. Ianieri said that he would do the best to protect the citizens. Uh, there's enough money to cover the budget. If you really want to protect the citizens and do your job, you'll vote a tax factor of zero. This is about John Condon. <clears throat> you can either do the bidding of John Condon by raising taxes, or you can protect the citizens by voting a tax factor of zero. In closing, I would like to have, I have good news for the council, especially Mr. Monahan, that I will be leaving the city. <laughs> I don't know if that's good news. No, who's going to call me anymore? <laughs> I just can't stay here and watch the once great and beautiful city being driven down the same road as Detroit. Because we have, the people running the city are economically challenged, and they have no idea how to uh, create wealth for its people just to keep them dependent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Matter. The next person who's on the list to speak is Paul Beck, Mr. Paul Beckner. Good evening, Mr. Beckner. How are you? Good. Thank you very much. Could you give your address evening, to the members. clerk? Could you give uh, your address to the clerk, please? It's Paul Beckner, 92 Quincy Street. Um, wearing the hat wasn't a show of disrespect, <laughs> please. Um, I was actually uh, exercising my First Amendment rights of free expression. Um, I think we have that right, even in the council chambers. I have never read anything against it. But to not make this the issue of the evening, I decided to take it off. I'd like to read something. We appreciate from, uh, that, Mr. Beckman. Thank you very much. And I, uh, I left a copy of this uh, for every council member. It's from our uh, late great president, John F. Kennedy, if I may. January 17, 1963. Uh, a report of his annual bu budget and his message to the Congress for fiscal year 1964. John F. Kennedy said, lower rates of taxation will stimulate economic activity and so raise the levels of personal and corporate income as to yield within a few years an increased, not a reduced, flow of revenues to the federal government. I think that says volumes right there. I read this and I couldn't believe it when I saw it. You know, this is something that totally relates to what's going on in the city right now. To keep year after year raising taxes on residents and businesses is having a reverse effect and it's really just keeping the city stagnant. It's, it's, it's regressive. It's not progressive in its approach. Um, I don't know what you can do tonight. I know tonight is about setting the tax factor. But if there's a way to send it back, regardless of the cost, send this back and readdress the budget, reducing taxes on the citizens, the residents, and the businesses in this city will be the saving grace for Brockton. And if you don't, I'm afraid of what's going to happen in the years to come. It's, uh, it's, on, it's on your backs, counselors, right now. And I hope you do the right thing. I'm praying that you do the right thing. And uh, with that, I'll uh, rest my case. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next uh, up is Mr. Thomas Sedell. Good evening, Mr. Siddell. How are you? I'm Siddell, 36 Westwood Avenue in Brockton. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, in the time that I was running my campaign, walking door to door, speaking to people, going to like 3,576 households and 
Just about everybody has said that they're sick and tired of the taxes going up the way they're going up. At $16.88 per thousand and $31.91 per thousand to be going up, we're just chasing businesses out of the city and uh, throwing people out of the city. Uh, we need to lower those rates to try to keep those people here and uh, take the burden off their backs, lower the, resident, lower the commercial tax rate and, and bring more businesses into the city. I really don't have too much to say to it about it. It's kind of like just throwing water into the wind, but I just wanted to come up here and say that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next I have on the list, but I don't see him here, Stephen Foote. Next, Eugenia Moore Jenkins. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. Could you give your address to the clerk, please? Hi, I'm Eugenia Moore Jenkins, 20 Onita Avenue, Rockton, Mass. I'm a new homeowner of eight years. At the time I acquired my home, I worked three jobs as a CNA, and houses was easily um, attainable. I thought eventually I would refinance my house, but I found out I had a certain type of loan. Now that I do have affordable mortgage, my mortgage tells me the reason why it's going up every year is because of the taxes. I don't have enough escrow. I said, a hundred dollars? Well, this is just like when I had an ARP mortgage. You know, every month you're going to go up another hundred. Um, if I can't make it on the percentage that I got in this house now, where am I going? Cafe Towers? I won't even be able to make it there. And I think it's a shame how hard I worked that Brockton has so many other organizations, like you say, we need the police, we, we need the fire department, but the south side of Brockton, it needs to be cleaned up. When you go through there, I've never seen a truck to come through here and clean none of Brockton. It's trashy over there. The north side is getting the same, but you're spending billions of dollars. You know, um, I just got into the hearings, starting to come to the hearings, and I'm glad that I'm learning bit by bit because there's a lot that goes on behind these doors, billions of dollars that the rest of Brockton need to know about other than just myself. I thank you for your time, allowing me to stand up and be heard. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next on the list is Patrick Quinn. Mr. Quinn? I don't see him here. Uh, Jacob Tagger? I appreciate the opportunity, but I respectfully decline to speak at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Tagger. That ends the list. Is there anyone else here who would like to be heard on the issue of the tax factor? Come on, Ms. Calaruso, you're for us. Why don't, stand, why don't you get in line up here, okay? Sure. Ask you to uh, state your name and address, and uh, please keep your um, comments limited to the tax factor. My name, and also about, uh, my name is Vincent Colarusso. I live at 95 Wilder Street in Brockton. My family's had business here for over uh, 70 years. And uh, you know, the taxes have gone up dramatically for a commercial uh, business owner and you know just the other day I someone called uh, we called about renting some property and the the person says oh yeah I could take this much money but my taxes are so high I have to get X amount of money and when when I actually figured out how much retail business would come in I, I said it's not worth it but it's you know like the gentleman had said Mr. Zaccaro the average income is forty seven thousand dollars a year so there's really not much room for disposable income for businesses so it really puts a, a real uh, sh you know strain on them where we're doing less business and unfortunately the taxes are like a mortgage payment now it's so high that that uh, you're, you're really struggling to pay your taxes more than yourself I myself worth about work about 80 hours a week and it's uh, it's it's hard but I, me personally, I, you know, I would rather see my real estate taxes on on my home go up versus the business because the ver the, the business commercial taxes are just exorbitant, 
and it, it just it's more of a burden for me. I, I don't really want to see anything go up, but we're in this predicament where you know you guys have to set a rate, and I'm begging for mercy on the commercial side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Calvary, sir. Sir, how are you? Thank you, sir. Thank you. My name is Adi Spier, and I live at 69 Ogier Street in Boaton. And thank you for having me tonight. Uh, I will ask the council please to reject the tax because it's not good for us. Uh, what we need in the city of Brockton is to make the city more friendly for business to come. So us as residents don't have to pay for uh, all this. Uh, every year is the same problem with tax raising. Sometimes we can't even pay your mortgage and you're about to use your houses. So I will ask you council please if you can uh, make Brockton safer so our business can come to Brockton, so we don't have to face that again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening, Mr. Cooney. How are you? Mr. Chairman, how are you? I'm good. Uh, this is my annual appearance at this hearing, and I have Larry Siskin. So we're going to ask you well. to try and keep your uh, comments uh, focused okay. on, the, Quickly. on the factor and be brief. Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you, you, sir. So Chris Cooney with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we represent about 1,000 companies located at 60 School Street across the street. We pay about $20,000 in taxes a year on that property uh, that we acquired from Thomas Edison uh, Company back in 1989. Uh, we're just set to do a $350,000 renovation, which I'm sure will trigger more tax increases. Uh, to Councilor Sullivan's point, the town of Plymouth reversed their rate back down to 1% because they had opened up industrial property and they wanted to make sure that they were attractive to businesses. Uh, to Councilor um, Dubois' point, uh, company, uh, towns like Easton do not in, uh, split their tax rate uh, until they get to a critical mass of businesses, uh, like was pointed out, and uh, they do that to attract and retain businesses that are there. Uh, this, this city uh, is at the point of, um, it's a different point than they used to be. Uh, there are many other options for companies to move out of the city uh, and also avoid the city. Uh, they can attract customers, customer base, and workers very easily being on the outskirts of this, of this city. Uh, and that's why you see companies uh, like Walmart and others uh, locating outside of the city uh, because they're able to access uh, the cu customer base. Um, the, the city um, currently uh, has a, a factor of 1.57. We are requesting a factor of 1.50, which uh, acknowledges that there is a split tax rate uh, in the city. Uh, it does uh, adjust it a bit up for business, but it also moves it more over to the, uh, the residential side. Uh, that 1.5 factor we've been advocating for the last uh, three years. Uh, there was a move a couple of years ago to move in that direction. Last year it moved back the other way. Uh, we're asking you to move it this way. This city is at a different point in time. They're actually in a point where they, we need to become a little bit more competitive so that we're on the relocation um, uh, lists for companies who are looking to relocate out of Boston. We've been successful in capturing some of those up until recently when the tax rate started to jump at a quicker and higher rate for the commercial side. Uh, so uh, we would respectfully request that a 1.5 factor be adopted tonight. Thank you. Uh, Larry Siskin is with us uh, tonight. He's a board member of uh, the Chamber of Commerce. I'd like him to uh, say a few words about uh, the situation. Mr. Siskin, how are you? I'm very well. Could you give, please give your address, please. And, uh, uh, my uh, name is uh, Lawrence Siskind. As I indicated, try and keep your comments brief. Thank well, you know my know. reputation. Know. It's <laughs> not easy. That's why I said I it. I will comply. <laughs> um, my name is Larry Siskin. Uh, I reside at 51 Briarcliff Road in Brockton. I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton, and I'm a uh, practicing attorney in Brockton for the last 46 years. I've been on many, many boards in the city and have been involved in many organizations. And I understand the pain that uh, both the city and the residents go through. But I understand, like you, that taxes are necessary. It's a necessary evil. However, tax rates should also reflect a larger goal of being competitive and attractive. It is important to set tax rates that attract and retain businesses. It is good for the community to have a strong base of businesses that can provide revenue and jobs. I repeat, jobs. 
Competition is a reality for every business and every community. Falling residential and commercial valuations have placed a rising proportion of tax burden on commercial property owners in Brockton. As you look at the comparisons of property, you can see surrounding towns that are only that are not only competitive, but they have available buildings with lower taxes and are actively seeking businesses from us. Brockton needs to get back to its roots as an undisputed business hub for a new and growing for new and growing businesses. Brockton needs to defend its position in the marketplace and make sure tax rates for businesses and residents are fair and balanced. We need a stimulus. We need our own stimulus. What is the stimulus? The stimulus is to lower the commercial rate. Lower the commercial rate, you'll increase jobs. You'll give us a much greater potential of increasing revenues and personal property taxes. The bottom line is we need to be purposeful in setting commercial tax rates that serve to attract and retain businesses in Brockton. We want Brockton to beat the competition when it comes to cost comparisons. Tax rates are the first item businesses look at when generating their carrying costs. We want to remind you of the value that businesses bring to the city of Brockton in terms of tax revenues for the city, tax subsidies for the residents, and most importantly, jobs, jobs, jobs. I respectfully suggest a tax rate of 1.5 to keep Brockton attractive to business and residents alike. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney Siskin. Is there anyone else who'd like to be heard? Please come forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Good evening, how are you? Good evening, Councilors. My name is Sandra Wright, Plymouth County Commissioner. And I feel like I'm in a different arena tonight because I'm here to tell you, or my intention was to come in and tell you what Plymouth County could do in services uh, for you. So um, I just want to start off by saying um, that um, my intention was to take a moment to tell you that the Commissioners, I am here to support your great efforts in and for the taxpayers' best interests. Although Plymouth County has been around for a long time, I believe that county government is the most effective level of government. Services that we currently provide for you are the Brockton Registry of Deeds in Brockton and the courthouse we manage and maintain in Brockton. On another note, we can also provide services such as the Mayflower Municipal Health Group, parking ticket program, management and oversight of a bulk purchase bid for uh, municipal vehicles, gas, diesel, fuel, and for police and fire equipment. <coughs> Excuse me. Projects that we are currently working on for the 27 communities and to benefit from is a waste management program, power energy, dredging for your lakes and ponds, GASB 45 for your housing authority. I know that all towns have different needs and it's hard to meet all your needs, but we are here to see what your, your needs are and to work with you. And, and we appreciate that and maybe uh, another date, uh, an invitation that's why I said I think I'm in a, the wrong arena. But yeah. anyways, I do thank you for do listening your, to me. Your, and your um, I wish you the very best, and you have all Plymouth County's support. Thank you. And it, it would be fruitful, I think, in the future to have this discussion before the full council so that other, the councilors can ask questions. Absolutely. What can do That's the, what I was hoping for. Thank right, you. Great. Thank you so much. Anyone else who would like to be heard? Tonight, please come forward and give your name and address to the clerk. Is there anyone else who would like to be heard? Seeing no one else, I'm going to declare the public hearing closed. So the issue now, councillors, would be on adopting a factor. Uh, we'll um, open it up for uh, motions. Before we do that, I was remiss at the beginning of the meeting uh, to let you know why I'm up here tonight. I got a call about 10 minutes to 7 from the Council President, Tim Cruz. Um, very sick, he unfortunately was unable to make it and asked me to chair, so we uh, send our best wishes to him and hope he feels better. With that, uh, I'll open it up for a motion. Mr. President, if I may ask, since, since the um, public hearing is closed, would it be appropriate, can, we can I ask the CFO for his opinion 
on one subject. There's no objection. Council, council, before we uh, accept the motion, uh, Councilor Petty would like to ask a few questions of the CFO. There's no objection. Ms. Condon? Thank you, Mr. Council, President. You have the floor. I appreciate it. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Good evening. Um, I have uh, one question. Could you please explain to us the role of Massachusetts general law, the Department of Revenue, and KPMG's annual audit of the city? How does, do those three items factor into all things tax rate-wise in the city of Brockton that lead us to here in this discussion? What role do, they, do those three items play um, in setting the tax rate, the city's worthiness, Okay. Um, well, the, the entire process for adopting uh, real estate property taxes is governed by the Mass General Laws. 59? Chapter 59 of the Mass General Laws. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 59 determines that uh, a city must assess all of its properties in uh, accordance with um, values which would be determined to say what is a fair cash uh, market value for each mm -hmm. property in the city. And um, it also limits the amount of the tax levy. There's a double limit under Mass General Laws on the tax levy. The first is that there is an absolute prohibition of taxing at more than 2.5% of the entire assessed value for the city. So if the city's assessed value as it is this year is about $5.3 billion, mm -hmm. the maximum tax levy that the city could have under any circumstances, including voter over overrides, if there were any, would be about $130 million. Now we're at about 116 and change. That says we're under our absolute ceiling. Okay. There's a second limit, which is an annual levy limit, and that's determined by a running calculation, which is the prior year's levy limit plus 2.5% plus taxation on new growth. I'll make a comment here. Earlier, uh, Paul said that there was a million dollars in change. I think he said a million four hundred thousand dollars of new growth. That's taxation on new growth. That's not the value in terms of assessed values of new growth. That's more like on a uniform tax rate. It would be about $70 million worth mm -hmm. of, uh, of values. So two limits. One is absolute. One is annually determined. And, determined, and the second one is 2.5% of the last year's levy limit plus taxation on new growth. After that, the law says that the city council must determine a factor, which is simply a determination as to whether and if whether how much you're going to shift real estate taxes from the residential class to the commercial, commercial industrial, and personal property tax. Um, that process is also governed by DOR oversight. Okay. So the Department of Revenue ensures that we're complying with the assessing requirements ensures that the taxes are uh, being assessed on values which have been fairly established in accordance with sales data and uh, statistical analysis techniques to assign values to every property on the basis of those sales, to ensure that your levy uh, factor is consistent with the laws as to how much you're allowed to shift to the residential as opposed to the commercial, and basically determining that in assessing and determining what your budget is, mm -hmm that you have reasonable revenue estimates. First, the tax levy itself must be legally compliant. Second, the other revenues that are in the budget that are supporting spending have to also either be as determined by the state with respect to state aid or with respect to their other uh, revenue estimates that they're reasonable with respect to circumstances that, you know, what are the laws that are in place, uh, what were your last year's realization. So when we set the factor, they will look at all of our revenues including the tax levy, and say we're compliant with property uh, tax requirements and with revenue estimates. The other piece, KPMG doesn't really have, or any auditor, if we had an, another outside auditor, really doesn't have much to do with the um, uh, process of setting the tax rate. Their view, uh, their role is more to establishing for outside reviewers of the city's finances, whether they're citizens or interested third parties or lenders to the city, that the city's books are uh, prepared in compliance with generally accepted accounting standards, and that you know we fairly represent the city's position in in doing that. Uh, that it's not really a part of the tax rate setting process. So, but if there were something not correct with the city's accounting with, with accounting standards, KPMG would 
would, yes. would, would red flag that. Yes, because the, uh, the information that is submitted to the Department of Revenue goes beyond what's used in the setting of the tax rate. We, ship, we submit annual statements and, and balance sheets, and they are looking for audited financials when they receive those from us, so the KPMG reports are received by them as well. And um, for the amount of years, as many years as I've been here in, in, in working with the, uh, with the tax rate and setting it each year, um, KPMG, as far as I know, is, have they ever come back with any um, um, thing that was and said there was anything wrong with our... Uh, um, with our accounting? Without, yes. No, not with our accounting. They also look at management practice and they have periodically made recommendations as to how we could strengthen our management practices. But we get clean audit re reports with respect to the quality of the, st the opinion on the, on the statements themselves. Okay. And uh, just one more question, Mr. Kwan. What is our bond rating today? That's well, basically an A, uh, A rated. That's good. Okay. Okay. Mr. Connor, thank you very much for answering those questions. Mr. President, thank you very much. Councilor Stewart, if we can get, keep the I comments so that we can get uh, a factor, understood. a motion on a factor. Thank you, Mr. President. Actually, I have a question for Mr. Connor and also Mr. Cooney. So the actual dollar amount of new growth for the city was how much again? Well, the amount that's revenue that's in the tax levy was about, it's on the pages, I think, 1400000 and something thousand dollars. But that's a, uh, a revenue which is based on assessed values from new investment in the city, which would be more like $70 million. So included in the $5.3 billion that Paul mentioned right. is a uh, certified new growth in the city. The Department of Revenue certifies those values as well of about $70 million. That's just an, es an estimate off the top of my head using a million four and right. what, would the, what would the values be needed to, to generate that level of, uh, of so, revenue. So the $70 million is investments in property values. Correct. It's not market value changes. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. So that, you know, if, you're, if your home value goes up or down because the market changes, that's not included in that. That's from Excellent. new investment in the city. Thank you. A uh, question for Mr. Cooney. Uh, Council, we're not going to allow any questions of the folks who spoke tonight. Okay. We're not. Uh, well, I have a uh, Mr. Condon is the chief financial officer. I have a question uh, for the, uh, the assessor. Then, then, then that's Sullivan. fine. Uh, Mr. Thank Sullivan, you. if you can come forward. Thank you. It may be beneficial to uh, make a motion for a factor and then ask questions then. So I'd like to follow my line of questioning before okay. we do that, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Sullivan, yes. uh, so with the new growth of $70 million in new investments that impact the property values, uh, so that indicates to me then that there is, there are new businesses in the city and despite the economic times, we're seeing economic growth in the city. It's a, fact, right? it's a combination of single family, new constructions, commercial construction. Um, we had an increase for the final development of the hospital, Car um, Caritas, Cerebus is the owner. Um, their emergency room came on, so we picked up some growth there. And but do you it's know a where combination the overall. Okay, I'm sorry. And do you know where the balance is between where small new growth in the small or new investments in the small business sector compared to larger businesses? Is there analysis of where that growth is happening? I can get that for you. I don't have all the individual properties and what their growth is. Is there a sense we of what that looks like? We have a total calculation of it, and that's what is presented here. But individually, I I can get that info. I was hoping to to have that question answered before talking about the factor. Is there a sense of where that's happening? Is most of this growth happening in the small business sector or, or larger no, larger businesses and larger projects? Mostly um, in the larger businesses because of the value is tremendously larger, <coughs> excuse me, than a, a single family home. You, you can have um, 50 new single family homes, which we had over the past three years, we've had approximately 92 new single-family homes being built. In the past, we used to have over 100 each year during the heyday. So your single families, those are limited. Your commercial is starting to pick it up. We also pick up um, commercial um, personal property, which, for example, in the hospital, um, to put in an emergency room there, the personal property bill is increased tremendously because of all the, the items used in the conduct of running the business. So the brunt of it is in the business commercial property. Right. And so and my last question would be, if you are a small business owner, let's say you have a law firm in the city and you're, you're not taxed, this tax isn't on the 
success of your business, how many clients you have, and how much money you're making. It's really just a tax on the assessment of your property. Correct. So you could be going gangbusters right now in terms of your business, but you're still paying on what the value of your property is, not the value of your business, correct? Correct. We're not your partner. Right. There's three approaches to value. You have a sales approach, cost approach, and income approach. Correct. So for single family properties, we do sales. For commercial and industrial properties, if we're fortunate to have sales, we can use those as a uh, basis, but also income and expenses. And so that's where you try to capitalize the income that's generated from that business and apply it to a value. But we don't say exactly. if you're making money, we're going to tax you more or less. Got it. That's at the income level. Income Correct. Income level. and expenses. Um, and um, so if you're a comparable business located in Brockton, uh, compared to a business in Easton, okay, uh, where you're making the same amount of income for your business, your property is less expensive here in Brockton, correct, than in Easton? It depends. In general? It depends, Counselor. Okay. It, it, every property is different and unique in its own way. There's okay, no two so properties so, the same. So if you have identical properties in, in Brockton and identical property in Easton and identical businesses, and those two businesses were making the same amount of income, that property would be less expensive for the owner in Brockton. The value would be less, correct? It could be. You'd have to analyze each sale. If the income is the same, it may or may not be the same. But, but the property is independent from the income, correct? I mean, your property Our value, is again, the three approaches, if it's income and expenses. Uh, and so if, you're, if the Brockton tax, if the factor here in Brockton is higher than Easton, if that were the case, but your property is valued less, your actual tax bill is less, correct? If the value is less and the rate is less? No, I'm saying if the property is, if the value of the property is less, but the rate is higher, your tax bill is still actually less, correct? Again, depending upon what their rate is, I don't know what Easton's t tax rate is. I can tell you what Brockton is. Well, let's look at the example that you have here in front of us then for these other cities. I, so if there's, a, if there's a, a city or a town with a higher property value on average than Brockton. You can take whatever the value is of the building right. times whatever the individual rate is for each community. That's going to equate to a tax that's payable each year. And that changes from year to year. So if the value is less than the same tax rate, the less value, that tax amount for that year is going to be lower. So in the comparison that you've provided us in the tax rate sheet, um, with towns that have a uh, split rate, like Brockton, you've listed Randolph, Quincy, Taunton, and the numbers. At what point does uh, that a tax rate that's lower than Brockton's, but our property values are less, when does that sh balance, that shift change from a tax rate being higher, but the value being less, and so your, your tax bill is actually less? Or the in the page one of the chart that I handed out in the pamphlet, if you look at Brockton, the average tax bill ranking for single family properties, we're 266 out of 351 communities. It was mentioned earlier there was like 340 or 341 communities in the state. There are 351 and Brockton is 266, which means it's in the lower one-third right. of taxes. And every okay. community is different. You're going to need to wrap it up. We do have mm -hmm. the set of facts. Yes. That's what's okay. before the council now. So I'm giving you some leeway, so if you could please wrap it up. Um. Okay, I, I, I'm still not quite seeing where that, where that correlation is, but I'll, um, I'll just have to sort of think it through. Please stop in my office. Well, it'll be after the yeah. fact. <laughs> it doesn't well, help, but um, um, okay. <laughs> Certainly, Council, the, the, once a factor is um, motions made, there can be discussion on the factor. But right. Okay, thank you. Chair will be in receipt of a motion uh, to set the fact of uh, this 19, uh, 2014.
Take a recess.
We'll be Please back in. Larissa. Microphones back on, councillors. I'm going to reopen the meeting of the City Council. Council Sullivan. Mr. President, I think uh, just point of information because a couple different factors were stated tonight. Um, if we kept it at last year's rate, $1.57, um, it would be an increase on the residential side from 1688 to 1806, which is a $1.18 increase. And on the commercial side, it would go from 31.91 to 3448, which would be a $2.27 increase, point of information. And then if we listen to the factor recommended by Mr. Cooney at the Chamber, it would be an increase on the residential side of $1.64, going from 1688 to 18.52. And on the commercial industrial side, it would be an increase of 75 cents from 31.91 to 32.66. I thought that was uh, information that be sh should be shared. I crunched the numbers. Thank you, Council. I, I agree with you, Council. Thank you for that, uh, for that information. Council, the, uh, the question now is for us to uh, begin to set... Mr. President. Go ahead, the Council Bill. Can we remain in our seats while we set the factor? Yes, you may. Thank you. Mr. President. Go ahead, Councilor Brophy. Move to set a factor of 1.52. Motion's been made to set the factor at 1.52. Do I have a second on that motion? No second? Councilors? Mr. President. Mr. Councilor Brophy. Move to make a uh, set of factor of 1.53. Been moved to make a motion to set it at 1.53. Do I have a second on that factor? Councilors? Second. Motion has been made to use the factor of 1.53 by Councilor Brophy. Motion has been seconded by Councilor. Studinsky, the question now is on voting on the factor by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Pioneer. No. Macmillan. No. Nope. Monaghan. No. Petty. No. Stewart. No. Studinsky. No. Sullivan. No. Nine in the negative, one in the affirmative. Fails. Does not carry, it fails. Councilors, we need to continue on. So we still need a motion to set a factor. Do we have something? Mr. President. Councilor Brophy. Move to set a factor of 1.54. Second. Motion has been made by Councilor Brophy to set a factor of 1.54. It's been seconded by Councilor Stewart. The question now is on adopting that factor by a roll call vote. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Ionieri. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. No. Petty. No. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Three in the affirmative, six in the negative. Yes. In fact, it, it does not. It, it does not pass. It fails. Councilors. Mr. President. Council Monaghan. Uh, make a motion for a uh, rate of 1.55. Motion to be made for a factor of 1.55. Do we have a second on that? A second on 1.55. I'll second it. Motion has been made at 1.55 by Councilor Monahan, seconded by Councilor Brophy. The question now is in the adoption of that factor. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. No. Dubois. No. Pioneer. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Four in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion fails. Mr. President. Councilor DiNapoli. Motion for 1.57. Motion has been made to set the factor 1.57. Do we have a second on that? Oh. A second on the factor of 1.57. No 
motion. We do not have a second. There is no second. I'll on second it. The motion was made of the factor of 1.57 <coughs> by Councillor Denafli and seconded by Councillor Brophy. Now the question is on the adoption of that factor. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. No. Denafli. No. <coughs> no. Ionieri. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. No. Teddy. No. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. No. Sullivan. No. Ten in the negative. The motion fails. Mr. President. Councilor Monahan. I make a motion for a uh, rate of 1.56. Motion has been <coughs> made to accept the factor of 1.56. Do we have a second on that? Second. Motion is made at 1.56 by Councilor Monahan, seconded by Councilor Stadinsky. <coughs> the question is on the adoption of that factor by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Annapoli. No. Dubois. No. Ionieri. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. Yes. No. Stewart. No. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Three, <coughs> five, seven, seven and nine. The motion fails. <coughs> Councillors, I know it's a difficult task, but we've got to come to some type of an agreement. I make a motion at 1.63. The motion has been made by Councilor Dubois for 1.63. Do we have a second on that? Do we have a second on the motion of 1.63? No second to the uh, to the motion. Mr. President, Councilor Moynihan. Let's try 1.58. Motion by Councilor Moynihan for 1.58. Is there a second on 1.58? Second on the motion of for the factor of 1.58. Second. Second by Councillor Stadinsky. The question now is on uh, the adoption of that factor by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. No. <coughs> Napoli. No. Dubois. No. Ivory. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Two in the affirmative. The motion fails. How many we got left? <laughs> Last year we did it twice. We did one twice yeah. before. It Councilors? Mr. President, can we have a uh, two minute recess? Chair will recognize a two minute recess. <laughs>
reconvene the uh, city council meeting and we're in the process of trying to set the uh, the tax factor councillors we have to um, we have to make some accomplishment here this evening so I would ask that we um, continue to work together but hopefully we can do it in some type of harmony so that we can have a, a factor as I said I know it's a difficult task but we've, we've got to um, we've got to come to grips here with this particular uh, item um, councillors floor is open now for new uh, motions and which direction you want to take this Council Brophy move for a factor of 1.55 Second. Motion has been made by Council Brophy and seconded for a factor of 1.55. Again, Council's 1.55. It's now to move for the adoption of that factor. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Ampley. No. Dubois. No. Ionieri. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. Yes. Kudinski. Yes. Sullivan. No. Four in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion fails. Mr. President. Good luck. <laughs> Councilor Moynihan. Uh, motion for a rate of 1.56. Motion has been made for 1.56. Do we have a second on that, on that factor? 1.56. Motion has been made by Councilor Moynihan. Do not have a second on that on that motion. Mr. President, Council on one hand. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How about uh, I make a motion for a rate of uh, 1.59? Motion has been made for the factor to be set at 1.59. Do we have a second on that? That's 1.59. Second. Motion has been made uh, by Councilor Monahan, seconded by Councilor Stadinsky. Now it will be for adoption of that factor by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. No. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Pioneer. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Two in the affirmative, eight in the negative. Mr. President. Councillor. I'd like to try the factor again at 152. Motion has been made by Councillor Macmillan for uh, the factor at 1.52. Do we have a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Councillor Brophy on the factor for adoption. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Napoli. No. Dubois. No. Pioneering. No. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. No. Petty. No. <laughs> Stewart. No. No. Sullivan. No. Two in the affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion fails. Councillors. Do we want a single rate? 1.0? Second. Motion has been made for a single rate at 1.0 by Councillor Macmillan and seconded by Councillor Brophy. Beyond the adoption of that factor, 1.0, clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Pioneer. <laughs> no. <laughs> Macmillan. Yes. Do that. Make sure you spell my name right. Monaghan. No. Headed. No. 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 Motion fails. Mr. President. Councillor DiNapoli. Motion for 1.50. Motion has been made 
for a factor of 1.50 by Councillor DiNapoli. Do we have a second on that motion? Second. Motion has been seconded by Councillor Brophy. For adoption of that factor, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. DiNapoli. No. <laughs> no. Pioneer. Yes. Macmillan. No. <laughs> yes. No. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. No. Sullivan. No. Read the affirmative seven and eight. The motion fails. Mr. President. Council I would Dubois. like to make a motion at um, 1.59. Second. Motion has been made by Councilor Dubois for 1.59. Seconded by Councilor Moynihan for the adoption of that factor. 1.59. Roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. No. Wow. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Stadinsky. No. Sullivan. No. Macmillan. No. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. No. Zedinsky. No. Sullivan. No. One in the affirmative, nine in the day. The motion does not pass. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion on 1.58. Second. Uh, motion been made by Councilor Dubois for 1.58, seconded by Councilor Moynihan. To set that factor, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. No. Annapolis. No. Yes. Pioneering. No. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. Yes. Solomon. No. Three in the affirmative, seven in the negative. Mr. President. Councilor Macmillan. Let's try the fact of one, five, six. Second. Motion's been made. Uh, by Councillor Macmillan for the fact to be set at 1.56, seconded by Councillor Monaghan for adoption. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Denapoli. No. Dubois. No. Pioneer. No. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Solomon. No. Sorry. Fails. Have five we tried every one? Five. I think we ha I we've tried. Mr. President. Councilor Petty. Can I be allowed to make a statement before a, a, another factor is brought forth? Anybody have any objections to Councilor's lines? It's we'll stop, discussion please. based upon the factor. I'll allow that. Thank you. If it enlightens us. What I feel is going, what I feel as though is going on tonight is like a policeman at the scene of a crime where one of the bystanders knows what's happened, yet the policeman has to search and search for the answer. When the answer is quite clear, there's a $350 million proposed project that would have us discussing tonight how low do we want to set the taxes, not how much of a possible increase. Thank you very much. You really would Councilor. Really would. Thanks, Mr. President. <laughs> you got it. We'd be lowering the taxes tonight. Are you coming to next? No, we would Next week's meeting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we're done tonight. <laughs> this isn't a laughing matter. It's the truth. No. Council. Point of order, Mr. Council. Chairman. Council. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Through the chair to Council Brophy, this is the third time that we've been on 1.56. They've been noting the the, uh, the factors. The Council. third time we've been asked for 1.56. I'm saying we're just going through the cycle here. That's all. It's making my point. That's all. It's a serious issue. Well, he's right. But with a factor. He's not right. I don't it's believe serious. he's taking it. It's, it's, yeah, I come it's up, serious. My factor is a, it's a $350 million project. That's enough. Thank you. Just keep in mind the budget was passed, so now we're in the position we're in. That's what we have to deal with. Let's continue on, Councillors. Thank you. Oh, God. Councilor, is it? I'll give it another shot. Councilor Moynihan. Uh, how about a factor of 1.60? Motion's been made for a factor of 1.60. We'll have a second on that. And that's a killer. For the
So no second. Mr. President, one five six again. Second. Second. Oh. Motion has been made uh, by Council McMillan for one point five six. Been seconded. Um, who seconded? I'm sorry. Council Moynihan seconded the motion. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. On the motion. On the motion, Council Brophy. I hope the councils keep in mind that the reason we're doing this is to determine the factor we will uh, proportion the, the rate between commercial and residential, not on non-existent projects that are, that are being proposed in the city. So I hope the councils will keep that in mind. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Brophy. Motion was made and seconded. Mr. Mr. Clerk, you can call the roll. Brophy. Yes. No. Dubois. No. Pioneer. No. Macmillan. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Five in the affirmative, five in the negative. Fails. 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 The motion fails. Yeah, I'm Mr. President, yeah. I'm at the point right now where no, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm, we're getting We're taking anything. a five minute recess.
Who's he yelling at? I reconvene the uh, city council meeting back into order. We're still um, debating the uh, tax factor. Mr. President. Councillor Stewart. The proposed uh, 1.57. Second. Motion has been made by Councillor Stewart and seconded by Councillor Moynihan for a factor of 1.57. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Brophy. No. 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 Pioneer. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. <coughs> yes. Teddy. No. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Five in the affirmative, five in the negative. Mr. President, motion fails. Councillor Moynihan. Uh, tax rate 1.58. Isn't that what we just voted on? No, we did 157. We voted motion, on it motion five been, times. But yeah, motion's but. been made for a factor of 1.58. Is there a second on that? Second. Motion's been seconded by Councilor Sullivan for a factor of 1.58. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. No. Anathlete. No. Dubois. Councillor Dubois. I'm just thinking for a second. I'm sorry. I'm holding you up. But it seems like we have time, right? No. <laughs> just been sitting here. I'm going to say yes. Pioneer. Yes. Macmillan. No. Monahan. Yes. Teddy. No. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Five in the affirmative, five in the negative. Just missed it. Motion fails. <coughs> Councillors, which direction are we going? 1.57 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, I'll make a motion at 1.60. Motion by Council Dubois for 1.60. Is there a second for the fact of 1.60? I'll second it. Motion has been seconded by Councilor Sullivan. Will the clerk please call the roll for the adoption of that factor? Brophy. No. Annapolis. No. Yes. Yes. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. No. Teddy. No. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Four in the affirmative, six in the negative. All right, councils, we'll take a, another shot at another factor, but at some point, Mr. President, I'm probably going to ask that we postpone this and take it up at our next meeting. We've got to, we've got to do something here, Council. For the third time, I'm going to go with 156. Motion has been made to go with 1.56 by Councilor Macmillan. Second. And it was seconded. <laughs> Sounds like it was a charm on the second one, so it was more than one. <laughs> but the motion has been made and seconded. Clerk, please call the roll. Rofi. Yes. DiNapoli. No. Dubois. No. Pioneer. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Teddy. No. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Six, you got it. Sullivan. No. Six in the affirmative, four in the negative. The motion has been adopted with the factor of 1.56. Six. Six. Right. We have to take recess, right? Yes. Council's in recess for a few minutes.
Come on. We are back in session. Mr. Clerk, would you please read the uh, order that is before us in regards to setting the tax uh, factor? In City Council, December 9th, 2013, ordered that the City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 in personal property. Residential, 64.1175. Commercial, 25.9224. Industrial, 4.7383. Personal property, 5.2218. The factor for such classification shall be 1.56. The question now is on the adoption of the order. By a roll call vote, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Annapoli. No. Dubois. No. Ianieri. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. No. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. In the affirmative form made. The motion uh, passes. The order passes. President. Uh, Councilor Brophy. President, I move for reconsideration in the hopes that it second. does not prevail. Motion has been made for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail, and it was seconded. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Reconsideration uh, fails. Mr. Clerk, the next item. The report of the Real Estate Committee for its meeting of December 2nd, 2013. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Mayor submitting a letter of resignation of Patricia Foley from the Brockton Commission on Women's Issues. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor submitting a letter of resignation of Robert A. Jarvis from the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the President of Trinity uh, Brockton, Inc., General Partner of Trinity Brockton Limited, Partnership requested that the City Council approve the attached loan agreements in order to close on the project financing and move forward with the downtown project. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have an ordinance amending Chapter 27 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton be ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Chapter 27 zoning of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton is hereby amended by amending the zoning district map on the southerly side of Field Street, eastly of North Main Street, more particularly described as plots 109 and 110 Field Street, in Council, September 23, 2013, ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance and Planning. In Council, November 25, 2013, passed to a third reading. The question is to be adjourned by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Annapoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ianieri. Yes. McMillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. And in the affirmative. The ordinance is adopted. An ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Chapter 2, Administration, Article 4, Financial Affairs, is hereby amended by adding the following new section, Section 2-260, Senior Citizen Property Work-Off Program, in Council, July 23, 2012, ready to refer the Standing Committee on Ordinance. In Council, November 25, 2013, the amendment passed by hand vote, passed to a third reading, as amended. The question is to be ordained by, um, no, sorry. Yeah, it is. the question is to be ordained by, as amended by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Brophy. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. This might be my favorite yes of the year. Yes. Mary. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Absolutely yes. Kennedy, the, ordinance, the ordinance is adopted. The ordinance by which the City of Brockton accepts Mass General Laws Chapter 59, Section 5N, in order to authorize establishment of a program to allow veterans, as defined in Clause Mass General Laws Chapter 4, Section 7, Clause 43, to volunteer to provide services in exchange for reduction in real estate property tax obligations of that veteran 
on that veteran's tax bills, which reduction shall be in addition to any exemption or abatement to which that person is otherwise entitled. In Council, February 25th, 2013, ready to refer the Committee on Ordinance. The report was favorable. In Council, November 25th, 2013, the amendment passed by a hand vote, passed for third reading as amended. The question is be ordained as amended by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Rofi. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The ordinance is adopted. Order that the mayor and or treasurer collector is hereby authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to convey the property located at and known as Plot 40-1 Foster Street, parcel ID 065-074 to George Millett, 925 Center Street, for the purchase price of $2,000. In Council, October 15, 2013, read and referred to the Committee on fi uh, Real Estate. That report is favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Rofi. No. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is, the order is adopted. Mr. Or President. Councillor Dinapoli. I would like to move uh, under the suspension of the rules tonight, uh, order number 14. And if there's any questions, Mr. Condon is here tonight. Second. This, this is a time refrain that this has to get moved before the end of the year. It's just it won't be a finance meeting next week. We'd like to move on tonight. Very good. The motion has been made to move under suspension of the rules and has been properly seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? We'll take it under suspension of the rules. And um, any questions by any of the guests or any other councils have any questions for those that are. Oh, I'm sorry, read the order, Mr. Clark. I'm sorry. Order that the City Council authorize the approval of the attached loan agreement between the Brockton 21st Century Corporation and Trinity Brockton Commercial Master Tenant Limited Partnership, Trinity Brockton Phase 1 Limited Partnership, and Trinity Brockton for phase one limited partnership in substitution of the loan agreements approved by the order of the city council dated October 29th, 2013. I believe some people are here. If we have any questions, councillors, in regards to this. Uh, I just matter. have one question for Mr. Condon. Yep, councillor Brophy, is Mr. Condon? Uh, uh, whoever can, the question is, why are we here a third time on this? That's the question. I'd like to hear a whole explanation. Good evening. Um, I Good think evening. I can address, I guess, why we're here a third time. Um, when we were here six weeks or so ago, uh, the City Council voted to accept 11 million and some odd dollars from the state to authorize the city to grant that money to Brockton 21st Century to be loaned to Trinity uh, pursuant to certain loan agreements. Um, because the loan agreements were attached and you approved them in their specific form, uh, we're back here today to ask for a substitution because there have been a few small changes that were required by other financing parties on the deal. Uh, the two changes to the residential um, loan agreements, um, well, but a few changes. A couple were just changing the address, and then they also added some language, taking away the automatic consent to assignment, and also adding for an additional party to attempt to cure. That, both of those changes strengthened Brockton 21st Century's position. And then the changes on the commercial loan agreement um, were required by the attorney uh, dealing with the new market tax credit portion of the deal because they more accurately describe the disbursement process for those, those specific loan funds. Did this, the, that portion of it, did it have anything to do with the failure of um, Trinity to get financing? I don't believe so. Uh, Terry McNeil's here. He's general counsel for Trinity, as is Jim Keefe. Uh, they can probably speak to that. I don't, I don't believe so, though. So I want to know if we're here tonight because of it, there's a difficulty with financing. Sure, I understand the question. Terry McNeil, general counsel of Trinity Financial. The sole reason we're here, we're actually on the cusp of closing on the housing portion. All construction financing is lined up. Documents are signed in an escrow. We're hoping to close tomorrow on that. 
Uh, with the commercial portion, we're expecting to close by the end of the year. Documents are going back and forth. That's where these changes came from. The sole reason we're here, Councilor Brophy, is because the specific forms of loan agreements were approved back in October. And although we didn't want to take up too much of your time, we see how you folks are very busy, we did want to eliminate any doubt that what is getting signed differs at all from what you folks previously approved. Sole reason we're here. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors, any other questions? In regards to this matter? Mr. Chairman? Councilor Dubois? Could, could someone just re-explain why we're here tonight, just the exact changes, just one more time? Just Sure, sure. so uh, to, to uh, explain fully what we're talking about, it's a project, you folks are familiar with it, it's the block bounded by Montello Center, uh, Main Streets and Petronelli Way. It's both, uh, there's two main components, a housing component, a commercial component. They're being developed by three separate entities, and so the funds are going to three separate Trinity affiliates. They're all guaranteed. The construction's guaranteed by Trinity Financial. Brockton 21st Century is our lender. Uh, the City Council approved the grant agreement that uh, dispersed the grant funds from the city to Brockton 21st, but the City Council also approved the loan documents by which those funds are granted or, or loaned from Brockton 21st to the Trinity entities. And so because those forms were approved, we're here again today. The specific changes uh, with respect to the housing documents are very technical. They're changing addresses for the notice parties and they're eliminating the right of Trinity to freely assign the loan to another party, tightening that up a bit at the request of some of the investors and as Caitlin mentioned, uh, strengthens the position of B21 as a lender. On the commercial side, we're using something called New Markets Tax Credits. They're uh, tax credits made available by the U.S. Treasury. Uh, they're heavily... There are a number of tax lawyers who review those documents for closing and comments that they had particular to the structure and to clarify it are what brought us back here on the commercial component. Can you explain the reassign to another party part? Sure. Uh, these transactions have many lenders and many parties and investors to them. When uh, the loan agreements for the housing portion were first drafted, uh, they allowed in part an assignment by Trinity to one of its lenders in the unlikely event of foreclosure. Um, and the original loan document allowed that to be done without B21's express consent in certain circumstances. The revision eliminates that. So no matter what, if there's any event where um, Trinity is going to need to assign it to another party, assign the loan, Brockton 21st Century expressly needs to consent to that. Trinity doesn't have the right to do that without their consent. And if they don't consent, what would happen? It's a default under the loan. Yeah, and then who would be responsible for that? Brockton 21st Century can foreclose on that. There's a construction completion guarantee from Trinity Financial Inc., which Brockton 21st and through them the city and EOHED could look for a remedy from them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council Dubois. Any other questions, Councilors? Council Sullivan? I could, Mr. Chairman. Attorney Leach, just a quick question. Um, does Brockton 21st Century use uh, attorneys of the city, or do they have their own outside counsel? Um, they have outside counsel. They've obtained uh, Nella Lucier from Lynch and Lynch. They previously used Clyde Hanyon, but I believe he's retired and she's taken over in his stead. Okay, and they're working, they work hand in hand with you as well? They're working hand in hand. They've been privy to every email communication through this entire closing, and I actually have um, communication from Joe Casey, uh, who's discussed the changes with Nella, and she approved all of them already. They've been fully vetted by Lynch and Lynch. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Any other question, Councillors? Seeing none, the question now is an adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Brophy? No. Annapolis? Yes. Wow. Yes. Ionary. Yes. Macmillan. No. Monaghan. Yes. Teddy. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. <coughs> yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eight in the term of two and an eight. The order is adopted. Mr. Council President, Congress. I was remiss. I'd like to make a motion of reconsideration uh, and consider, in hopes it doesn't prevail, collectively number 11 and number 12 on the agenda. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for reconsideration. Hopes it does not prevail for items number 11 and 12, correct? Yes. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Reconsideration fails. Thank you. Any other uh, business before? Mr. Mr. President, Councilor move for reconsideration on uh, uh, order number 14. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for reconsideration on order on number 14. All those in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Reconsideration fails. Councilor Petty. Mr. President. Yes, Councilor. If I may make a motion to accept the late file. Second. 
Yeah, so be it. Has a been Motion's been made and seconded to accept the lay file. All in favor of that? Opposed? Order that the name, naming of Day Avenue also be known as Tataria Way. Mr. Clark, thank you very much. Mr. President, thank you very much. Members of the Council, as you uh, may be aware, uh, last Thursday, uh, December 5th, Charlie Tatali, the owner of Jordan's Cafe, great Brocktonian, contributed to the community, was honored by Signature Healthcare, Brockton Hospital, for his contributions to the community. Mr. Tatalia yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is very giving to the hospital community as well as the citizens of the city of Brockton. And I would say that most everyone in this room at one time or another has, uh, has been at George's Cafe or has uh, um, had a, a member in their family that, that might have played on a sports team that was, um, that was supported by Mr. Tataglia. And uh, several months ago, um, Councilor Monaghan, myself, and some others were looking for a, a way to, um, for the city to acknowledge and recognize Mr. Tataglia as well. And we came up with the um, proposal to name, as well as keep its current name, Day Avenue, Day Avenue uh, Tataglia Way, which runs parallel with George's Cafe. And we presented Mr. Tartaglia with this um, beautiful street sign the other night at the Shaw Center. And Council Monaghan presented um, a citation from the City Council as well, recognizing Mr. Tartaglia for his contributions to the community. And I'm asking for your support tonight so we can get that street sign placed on the pole um, <coughs> along with Day Avenue. And so Mr. Tartaglia... Um, will uh, be recognized by everyone who passes that street every day, whether it be in business in Brockton or just part of the neighborhood. And uh, Mr. Tataglia is, um, is worthy of this recognition, and I ask for your support tonight in voting for this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor. Councilor Brophy. Did he move to suspend the rules that tonight? Uh, he didn't. We, we moved to... Uh, uh, it's a Mr. late file. It was a late file to... Yep, and I would like to ask on the suspension of rules to have this voted on this evening so we can pass it and have, exactly. and have the sign made and second to act upon this un under the suspension of the rules. All in favor? Opposed? We'll act on upon it under the suspension of the rules. And the, um, Mr. Clerk, would you please um, call the roll? Yes. Napoli. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. Ionary. Yes. Macmillan. Yes. You said Monahan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 The order, is, the order is adopted and that the sign will hopefully go up shortly indicating Tataglia Way. And we commend Charlie for his many, many years of service to the city in every such capacity, even as he served here as a city council some years ago. Mm -hmm. We appreciate uh, his, uh, his well, times Mr. and effort. Mr. President, if I Brogan. may, having served with Councilor Tataglia, uh, to make it happen sooner, I move for reconsideration in the hopes that it does not prevail. Second, Second. which has been made for reconsideration in hopes that it does not prevail. All in favor? Opposed? Reconsideration fails. Councilors, any other? Uh, Councilor Sullivan. So, uh, moment of personal privilege, please. Yes, Councilor, uh, you may. Two, two, two points of information. Number one, I want to personally thank the Council, uh, all my colleagues, for supporting two good ordinances tonight, number 11 and number 12, which is going to help the senior citizens and the veterans. And I want to thank our Legislative Council, who uh, did yeoman's work working on that. But I also want to thank um, all those that participated Saturday in the Jingle Bell Run, uh, Dave Gorman, who, uh, who was just tirelessly working. I saw Councilor Stewart there, Councilor Petty was dressed up in his holiday garb, and uh, I'm sure there was other councilors there, but it was a great event. And uh, that event was followed by a wonderful, wonderful event on Belmont Street at Petty's Market. And Todd, you and your family should be extremely proud of 100 years of great service to the citizens of Brockton. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, uh, thank you Councilor Sullivan. Councilors, there is no finance meeting for, for next Monday. Thank we will you. again be here as a council on December 23rd. That will be the last meeting that will be as a city council and it will also be the last meeting for Councilors Brophy and Councilor Petty and Councilor McMillan so we'll be able to beat up on them that evening. <laughs> you welcome that. In any case, um, seeing none, any other business? Seeing none, the meeting adjourned. Good night.